A biological male just set a new record in women's cycling. Boston wants to make it illegal to say the B word, you know, the one that rhymes with itch. And math classes in Seattle are about to get woke. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. I hope you're having a great week. We've got a lot to cover, and I want to start with what's going on in Boston because it involves freedom, you know, one of those fundamental American concepts, a concept so important that other countries have gone through revolution in order to be more like America because of America's freedom. And one of those founding principles, like you see in the First Amendment, is freedom of speech, okay? You can say what you want to say, without the government coming at you. The government cannot infringe upon your freedom of speech. It's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple concept. Well, it was, but now, you know, it's 2019, and the left will do whatever it can to stamp out free speech when it comes to conservatives. You see conservative lecturers, speakers on college campuses, their lectures getting canceled because the left doesn't want people to hear what the right has to say. You see these safe spaces being established where freedom of speech is restricted, all in the name of freedom and tolerance and things like that. You see freedom of speech being restricted. So what's next? We'll check out what's going on in Boston. There was a great column from my friend Cheryl Chumley over at the Washington Times, and here's what she had to say. She said, A Democrat serving Boston, State Representative Dan Hunt, has successfully pushed forward for vote a bill, House Number 3719, aimed at banning the use of the B word, rhymes with ditch, hitch, and happy Halloween to kitties, which. The ban, it should be noted, wouldn't affect those who use the word in a loving context. As in a guy introducing his new gal pal to his group, hey, meet my new B. Nope, the ban only applies when the world... Words about to be slung to demean. So what's going on here? So you got the Democrats in government are wanting to ban certain words. And here's more. It says a person who uses the B word directed at another person to accost, annoy, degrade, or demean the other person shall be considered a disorderly person in violation of this section and shall be subject to penalties. The pertinent section of the proposed amendment to section 53 of chapter 272 of existing general laws states. So what's even more insulting is this Democrat, Dan Hunt, he's not giving interviews. He won't speak out about this legislation. But the person who inspired it, she's willing to speak out. And here's a report from Inside Sources. It says, Representative Hunt declined repeated requests to speak to Inside Sources on the record. An interesting decision for a government official proposing a government crackdown on speech. However, his office did confirm that he filed legislation on behalf of a constituent, a common practice in Massachusetts. Takia White of Dorchester, who works in community services, told Inside Sources she asked Representative Hunt to file the bill, and she absolutely believes using the B word should be a violation of the law. I hear the word used every day, and I'm hurt by it. And she is okay with the idea of the government banning people from using certain words? Oh yes, simply telling people they shouldn't speak that way is not good enough. At the very least, that word is harassment. All right, so this is ridiculous. This is, I mean... You have to ask yourself, what's next? I mean, how is this going to be enforced? You have speech police going around handling reports. And obviously, I mean, what comes after that? Thought police? It's just, it's just a crazy situation when you start banning certain words because then as soon as that starts, then you have other words on the list. Then you have other speeches on the list. Then you have whole categories of things you can't say and you know that it's going to be directed at the right. It's just the left's infiltration slowly but surely into government and other public arenas and media and tech and on and on, it will keep going unless we fight back. And it's just outrageous. And it shows you we're going to go to the next topic, which is equally outrageous. And it's one we've covered before. And it's these transgender athletes. All right. We saw it again this weekend. You had a woman's cycling event. The record was shattered by a biological male. Okay, here's a report from the Daily Caller. It says, biological male cyclist Rachel McKinnon won a women's world championship Saturday, 
McKinnon, representing Canada, won gold for the sprint events in the women's 35 to 39 age category at the 2019 Masters Track Cycling World Championships in Manchester, England. McKinnon set a woman's world record in the qualifying event, the BBC reported. McKinnon, a philosophy professor at the College of Charleston, won the same event in 2018. All right, so this is it's absolutely outrageous. The left is destroying women's sports, and this is what I want to do. I want to put out a challenge to the left to defend this, okay? They call themselves the defender of women's rights, all right? Well, here are women that are being deprived of championships, of medals, of podiums, all in the name of the transgender movement. It doesn't make any sense. And when people fight back, they just they just react. Well, McKinnon is very outspoken about this. And he took to Twitter this weekend and posted this. He said, I have yet to meet a real champion who has a problem with trans women. Real champions want stronger competition. If you win because bigotry got your competition banned, you're a loser. All right. People want, as an athlete, as a competitor, as someone who's been called hyper-competitive, I love competition. I love fair competition when you can go at people and try and beat them heads up. And no one woman is going to want to go against a biological male. It just doesn't make any sense. But, you know, those tweets are out there. Here's another one. It says, sports are part of public life. Trans women are either fully equal women or we're not. Guess what? You're not. It's a man. It doesn't matter what surgery you have or what hormones you take. It doesn't take your, change your chromosomes. It doesn't change the way you're born. It just doesn't change. I mean, you can mask it, you can hide it, you can put cosmetic changes, but it doesn't change. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely nuts. So prior to the event on Friday, McKinnon sat down with Sky News for an interview, and here's part of that. I'm legally and medically female, but mm -hmm. the people who oppose my existence still want to think of me as male. They use the language of that I'm a man, and so there's this stereotype that men are always stronger than women and so if you think of trans women as men then you think there's an unfair advantage so i just found it interesting that mckinnon said that men being stronger than women in sports is a stereotype i mean here's a picture of mckinnon all right that is not a stereotype that is not a woman all right and here's more from the interview do you think you'd have been a world champion cyclist if, if you hadn't transitioned I don't think I am a world champion because I'm a trans woman. I put in the work. Okay, and here's something else. And I saw these numbers. I saw this on another news story, and I wanted to share it with you because it just shows that this is not about fairness, okay? This is not about an equal playing field. It's about advancing a leftist agenda, and fairness and other things like that are just thrown out the window. Here's a report from Fox News, and pay attention to these numbers, okay? It says, since 2004... Transgender athletes have been allowed to compete in the Olympics, but only if they had undergone gender confirmation surgery and been on hormone therapy for two years. Four years ago, the Olympic Committee removed the need for surgery, but athletes are required to have a testosterone level below 10 nanomoles per liter for at least a year before their first competition. An average adult female range for testosterone is 0.52 to 2.8 nanomoles per liter with levels exceeding 2.7 considered to be the upper limit of normal. Okay, so those numbers, this is where it shows that fairness is just thrown out the window because I looked it up and in nanomoles per liter, the average testosterone level for men is 10 to 34, okay? And this was the range for women is about 0.5 to 2.8. So that means according to the Olympic Committee, men who want to compete as women have to lower their testosterone to 10, which is the lowest male level, which is still a, almost four times higher than the highest female level. So how is that even fair? That's not competition. Lower it down to female levels if they want to compete against females. And even so, that doesn't change the fact that they grew up male, okay? They have male muscles. They have male bones. They have male lung capacity. It's just, it's just outrageous. And yet this continues to go on and women's records are being broken by men. It's just, it's just outrageous. Next, I want to talk to you about President Trump because he's in trouble again. The left is always looking for a way to attack him. 
And this time they attacked him for a comment he made regarding impeachment. And I want to put his tweet up there. Here's what he tweeted. He said, so someday if a Democrat becomes president and the Republicans win the House, even by a tiny margin, they can impeach the president without due process or fairness or any legal rights. All Republicans must remember what they are witnessing here, a lynching. But we will win. So the presidents compared impeachment to lynching and the Democrats absolutely went nuts. It's dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. The problem is, is that it just shows their hypocrisy. It shows that they'll say anything to go after the right and denounce things and be all offended and yet use the same things when it benefits them. Here's a clip of some Democrats when President Bill Clinton was being impeached. And indeed, it is a political lynching political lynch mob. I will not vote for this lynching. So that was the course. That was the Democrats back then. And now, check this out. How dare the president compare lynching to impeachment? So that was Al Green, but there was more. There were plenty Democrats speaking out. I, I don't know how to characterize that from a president except as grotesque. Thousands of African Americans were slaughtered during the lynching epidemic in this country for no reason other than the color of their skin. See, it's just fake outrage. They go after the president for saying this, saying how outrageous he is to compare this, and yet they do the exact same thing. If it benefits them, They'll say the exact same thing that they criticize the right about. And here's just one more little dose of Al Green. How dare he do this? Does he not know the history of lynching in this country? All right, see, it's just outrageous. And here is the, the topper for me for today. All right, this definitely falls into our hashtag too woke segment because Seattle and the left, they're going crazy. And now they want to bring some wokeness into math education, okay, because apparently math is racist. And I've had about just about every math class that's been invented. And I, I never noticed that math was racist or elitist or imperialistic or uh, just anything that the left is now picking for a social justice cause, right? Well, they've picked math. And here is a report from Reason Magazine. It says, Math is a deeply frustrating subject for many elementary and high school students, but Seattle public schools are gearing up to accuse math of a litany of more serious crimes, imperialism, dehumanization, and oppression of marginalized people. The district has proposed a new social justice infused curriculum that would focus on power and oppression and history of resistance and liberation within the field of mathematics. The curriculum isn't mandatory, but provides a resource for teachers who want to introduce ethnic studies to into the classroom vis-a-vis -vis math. All right. So yeah, it's, this definitely falls under the hashtag too woke because it is just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And here is more from reason.com. Seattle's four page framework is still in the proposal stage. If adopted, its ideas will be included in existing math classes as part of the district's broader effort to infuse ethnic studies into all subjects across the K-12 spectrum. Tracy Castro Gill, Seattle's Ethnic Studies Director, said her team hopes to have the frameworks completed in all subjects by June for board approval. All right, so the story talks about this four page framework. So I went ahead and looked at it. And again, this is dealing with math, okay? Addition, subtraction, division, you know, algebra, calculus, physics, you know, just math, okay? And this four page framework, it's just absolutely nuts. I wanna put up some bullet points for it because you'll just be amazed. Here is some of what the framework talks about, what Seattle public schools want to introduce into math class, okay? There is identify how math has been and continues to be used to oppress and marginalize people and communities of color. Create counter narratives about the origins of mathematical knowledge. See the mathematical value in making mistakes, both as individuals and as a community. Explain how math has been used to exploit natural resources Explain how math dictates economic oppression. And finally, rehumanize mathematics through experiential learning and answering why. What does that one even mean? I don't, I mean, it's just, 
So this is what is going on in Seattle public schools. And you can bet people are thinking about doing it other places too. We're talking about math. And now math is going to fall victim to social justice warriors. It's just nuts. Folks, that's our show for today. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. It's a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, just a little reminder before you go, and no, this does not count against my 13 minutes. Please hit the subscribe button below and tell your friends. And if you happen to miss our last show, you can check it out right here. And also for great conservative news and commentary, please check out GOPUSA.com. All right, folks, we'll see you on the next show. Have a great day.